Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, it's so hey, good guys. to see you. Hi, Leah. Hey, what's going on? It's our third one for the week. Y'all ready? Third time's a charm. Let's do it. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. So we got a full house today, so uh, we're going to get to know more about an amazing organization that I'm very, very familiar with and get some great information on some amazing programs that benefit our warfighters. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Chief, we have a terrific panel with us today to highlight the Air Force Association and its mission to take care of airmen and guardians from the Air Force Association. We are honored to have Carrie Vullova, Vice President, Member in Field Relations, and Christine Brown, Senior Manager, Community Outreach. They are joined by Dave Long, an alumni of AFA's Wounded Airmen Program and the founder of Mission Warriors, and Joshua Smith is with us too. He's a wounded airman and an athlete who has been supported by the Wounded Airman Program. Please help us welcome Carrie, Christine, Dave, and Joshua to Chief Chat. Hey. Everybody, thanks so much for joining us. And you guys that are watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your questions and comments. Uh, we'll read those live. Make sure you follow our page and enable your notifications. We have great military exclusive guests for you each week on Chief Chat, and we don't want you to miss any of it. Awesome. Awesome. So, Carrie, Kristen, Dave, and Josh, man, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. We're so happy Thank to be here. Thank you so here. much for having us. Good to be here. Awesome, awesome. Can you can you let our viewers know where you're calling in from today? Sure. I'm in Arlington, Virginia, at AFA's Doolittle Leadership Center. And I'm next door to Carrie in uh, <laughs> AFA's Doolittle Leadership Center as well. I'm out here in sunny Phoenix, Arizona, where it's finally starting to cool down. Oh yeah. Hey Josh, what about you? Where are you calling in from today? Yeah, I think Josh got a little delay. I wonder if we lost him. Um, Okay, so Carrie, to get us started, can you tell us about the Air Force Association and its mission and your role at the organization? Absolutely. Um, our current chairman of the board is former Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Gerald Murray. Uh, and he always makes the statement that at AFA, we have the perfect mission. Uh, we're here to promote dominant air and space forces to support our airmen, guardians, and their families, and to remember just our incredible heritage. Uh, AFA was actually founded in 1946 with a core mission to um, advocate to have the Air Force become a separate branch, which happened in 1947. Um, so this year we're celebrating our 75th birthday. Uh, we've been going strong for 75 years and we're looking forward to the next 75. Um, I personally have been around for the past 17 years of it, and it has been such a blessing in my life. I'm currently serving as our vice president of member of field relations. And with that, I get to work and serve our 96,000 AFA members, our 200 volunteer chapters around the world. Um, I get to execute and lead amazing programs um, out of our AFA assistance fund, including a lot of our aerospace in education from, uh, programs. Uh, you talk and our Wounded Airmen program that we're excited to talk with you about today. Thanks, Carrie. And Christine, welcome to the show. Please share with us, what's your role at AFA? I'm calling in from Provo, Absolutely. Utah. All right, Josh, we've got you. So um, my role in uh, AFA is I am the Senior Manager of Community Outreach. Uh, I've been with AFA for about five years now. 
um, really just had the pleasure and honor of working with our wounded heroes through our um, wounded airmen program for about three years. And uh, alongside Carrie, have really just enjoyed being able to be a part of our wounded warriors stories and just getting to see the inspiration that they bring uh, to everyone each day. Um, so really just inspired by all of that and just so privileged to be a part of their journey. Awesome, so Carrie, so you, you founded AFA's Wounded Warrior Program. So tell us more about the program and its history and how it helps our Airmen and Guardian. Well, I wanna clarify, I can't take credit as the founder. I've been around since the beginning, but just like everything exceptional in life and in this world, it was an incredible team that came together to make this happen. Um, essentially around 2011 timeframe, uh, there was a Wounded Warrior who was at Walter Reed um, and the, he was getting a lot of support, but there just wasn't a lot of Air Force support there. And so we created the program. We really wanted airmen taking care of airmen. Um, and since uh, since then, we signed an MOU with the Air Force in 2013, and we've provided $750,000 in direct support to airmen and guardians and their families. Uh, we do everything from providing emergency financial support, providing travel assistance grants. We do a lot of work with the amazing caregivers. Um, Dave's going to talk to you. We do a lot of support with the healing arts programs. And candidly, sometimes we just really focus on being there when someone needs us just for a warm hug, a small act of kindness, just to remind you that your AFA and your Air Force family will always be here for you. No, that's awesome. No, go ahead, uh, Julie. It's all you, Chief. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I, I was just uh, kind of going back to the Wounded Warrior Program. Uh, I'm, I'm medical by trade, and so I'm very, very familiar with uh, uh, the Wounded Warrior Program just as a whole and all the great things that, um, that you know, that many organizations do. And I'm, so I'm, I'm just glad to see AFA is, has taken part of being uh, just another organization that really, really takes care of those wounded warriors. We, uh, we we try to take pride here at the exchange as well to uh, to, to hire wounded warriors as well. So, um, you know, it's a collective effort and, and you know, uh, my brother and sisters that, you know, have these, you know, injuries or invisible injuries from, from all the stuff that we, we deal with. And it's just, it's good to see that you guys are, uh, are, are really, you know, taking an active, you know, or creating programs like this for, for my brothers and sisters. So thank you for that. Dave, we want to welcome you to Chief Chat. I've got to say, this is, I think, the biggest Chief Chat crew, guest crew we've we've ever had. So um, I love that we have so many people on the show today. So Dave, welcome. We're going to turn to you. It's your turn to talk. Um, you've benefited from the Wounded Airmen. Yay, right? You've benefited from the Wounded Airmen program. So why don't you tell us about your military career and your journey with the program? Uh, well, <laughs> kind of a colorful military background. I was actually army for the first part and then got out and I just missed the military a little bit. So I came back in the Air Force, um, completed 17 years in the Air Force, uh, did some deployments and had a great time. Uh, also had some rough times and medical times. Um, I got, I, I went through, uh, a unique heart surgery and then from my deployment as an air advisor some issues happened and some also personal and family issues happened that just caused some PTSD to to happen and I got enrolled in the Air Force Wounded Warrior program back in I don't know 2016 if I remember correctly and it was a great program and it was my introduction to kind of adaptive sports and my introduction to um, the acceptance that you can be a wounded warrior and not have a missing limb. Um, wounded warrior is a, is a broader term, not only, not specifically just for missing limbs. It's, it's, you know, a loss of mental capacity. It's, it's, 
it's lo- it's having two heart surgeries and not being able to recover correctly. It's cancer survivors. It's it's not being able to be fully combat capable for yourself sometimes, and you need to have a hand to get back up and run again. Um, so that was a that was a change in lifestyle for me. Um, and the adaptive sports program that the uh, that AFW two was great. I uh, I wound up going down a different path a little bit, and I wound up diving in a little more on the the artistic side of it, and and it just started clicking a little bit better with me. Um, I think that answers your question. <laughs> it does. And so continuing on with that, Dave, um, can you tell us about the Mission Warriors and Healing Arts programs and then how do they improve the quality of life for airmen and guardians? Yeah, so um, the, the the healing arts, it, I never, I honestly never thought I'd come down this path and uh, I thought I'd retire and do my photography work and that'd be that and stuff. and and one day i was having a chat with a fellow warrior um and we just kind of we we both had been teaching he had been teaching improv and i was teaching photography to wounded warriors and we both felt that you know what we want to expand this we want to actually teach other people not just wounded warriors but we feel that other individuals all our air force brothers and sisters um, other veterans could use all these healing arts to help their strengthen their mental and emotional health. Um, so we developed an organization where our primary goal is to strengthen the mental and emotional health of our veterans through healing arts. Um, and we found a great partner with AFA who Carrie and Christine have been very supportive of us. and the mission arts is the program that we work with them and we've so far done it all virtually and we've got great feedback with it um and we we were going to do warrior games the first ever live healing arts at warrior games which we were really looking forward to but unfortunately due to the world pandemic events or whatever it's just wasn't able to but we're looking forward to next year um but the healing arts it is if you go to the gym and work out and you recover and you keep your muscles conditioned why don't you work out your mind and the healing arts are one of the most unique things that you can do to help condition your mind and help work your mind and and also it's a great way that you can give your conscious mind a way to work on something in order to allow your subconscious mind to come to the surface and start working problems and start working for you. Um, And a lot of times we forget to do that. So, so Dave, what I'm hearing is you got, how's your improv? That's what my question is. I, (laughs) I struggle with it a little bit because I, and, and, one of the best things I love about the healing arts is we actually encourage the, the imperfectness of it. And I'm, I'm a photographer. So a lot of times I'm a perfectionist and I, yeah, improv for me and perfectionist. I struggle with that like constantly. (laughs) Yeah. No, my improv sucks. And so uh, I, like I said, I'm, uh, and it's my, it's not great to be bad at improv and have a bot podcast at the same time. So yeah, it's uh, but but you know, <laughs> Julie, Julie and Rita they work with me though. But I appreciate them. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, I, hey Josh, are you still here? I don't know if we he can hear us or if he's on some type of lag or delay. Yeah, we were going to ask Josh about his Air Force career. Um, I see some movement with Josh. I see a little bit of movement. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we got some technical difficulties with Josh, so we're, we apologize about that. But we'll, if if he comes back in, we'll we'll circle back to him. So we'll go, just go ahead to the next question. 
so Dave, are you able to, we were going to ask Josh about adaptive sports and I believe you have some um, history with adaptive sports. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about what you competed in or how that helped you? Um, yeah, I, I did the adaptive sports with the Air Force Wounded, Por Air Force Wounded Warrior Program, AFW2. Um, I tried out for the uh, Warrior Games. Um, I had two heart surgeries, and uh, the adaptive sports, they're, they're just like the Paralympics. Um, the Wounded Warrior Games are structured just like the Paralympics. There's different categories um, for your abilities and everything. Um, unfortunately, my wound or a <laughs> survivor or or other different traumas it, it's kind of hard to categorize heart surgery into some category so i just wasn't able to compete with a 25 year old that was in my same category <laughs> i mean he, he could outrun me every every time on the track um i i became the old guy <laughs> um but what i what i did find out was that the AFW2 had some of the best coaches. They had the best support staff there that I learned so much about how I was running wrong, how I should be running, how, how I should correct my posture, how I should be eating more correctly for me. Um, there was, there, it was an amazing plethora of data that I got that that gave me the holistic health healthy lifestyle. Um, it wasn't just about the adaptive sports. I mean, the competition was great. It, it pushed me hard. I mean, nothing like a, a young kid to to run right beside you, you know, for 800 meters and and you're trying to beat them like it, it's tough. Um, but but it, it was the total support program that they had that that really, really um, helped me recover. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing that I'm grateful to. And, and I know Josh has competed in multiple Warrior Games and internationally at the Invictus level, um, and he could speak even more to that. Yeah, there's, there's so many parallels to, to sports and, and the military from a, from a team perspective, right? And so I could just imagine, you know, being, you know, taken out of an element that you've been used to for 20 plus years of your life and then trying to kind of, you know, get back get back right. But then to put you in, in, in sports is, is kind of like being with your platoon or being with your squadron or being with, you know, folks, like-minded folks uh, kind of going for one particular mission. So, uh, yeah, it's... It's amazing the power of sports uh, in healing just overall because it's not just a physical thing. It's about having that team that team concept. So I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So Carrie, what what does it mean to you and AFA to see Josh uh, and and uh, and Dave and the fellow wounded warriors thrive? Um, you know, th that's the question, Chief, that you know makes me tear up when I just think about it. Um, it. It's amazing to watch folks come in, especially when we're lucky enough to see somebody that they come to their first Air Force Wounded Warrior event. And, you know, a lot of times you're kind of on the sidelines, not sure what you're getting into. And then by the end of the week, what Marsha Gonzalez and her team with the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program do to get folks out of their comfort cell and really excelling and candidly, learning what's been inside of them the whole time is just exceptional. I can't say enough good things about that program. Um, I really wish we were able to hear from Josh. He's got such a great story. Um, he's somebody that if, if you watch him on the courts, no doubt in your mind, he is an exceptional athlete. But what you find when you really talk to him is he is such an amazing leader. And him and Dave both, what they do is they take what they learn and then they're always paying it forward to the next round of warriors, the next round of family members, the next round of caregivers coming through. Josh is serving as a mentor for people like Dave who might feel uncomfortable um, 
running that 800 meter dash next to the person next to him. Um, Dave's bringing people along, hey, I know you might not want to do improv, but hey, if I can do it, you can do it kind of thing. And it's really everyone's about paying it forward. That's the part that I love to watch more than anything. Um, I think we're, I'm, impre I'm incredibly proud of um, the dedication that AFA has given to this Wounded Airmen program um, because I feel like we're just very blessed to be part of this circle of kindness. Um, I'm one of those people, I know it sounds cheesy, but I really do believe that small acts of kindness will change this world. Um, and we love just doing what we can, whether it's small, whether it's big, um, whether it's a financial support or just a hug, because we know that through our Wounded Airmen program, those small acts of kindness and the support that then we're gonna see Josh and Dave and others will continue to thrive and pass on, that's the ripple effect that's truly going to make a difference in our Air Force, in our military community, in our AFA family. That's great, Carrie. I, I love your passion and that's really shining through during our chat here today. What, could you tell us, what is Josh, Josh's uh, sport of choice? What would he have been competing in if the Warrior Games were going on? Gosh, I think Josh does everything, to be honest. Um, I don't know if we have uh, even his frozen picture, but Josh is incredibly tall, which makes him exceptional at seated volleyball and wheelchair basketball. Um, I really, truly, Dave, help me out here. I think he kind of does a little bit of everything, um, but the wheelchair basketball and the seated yeah. volleyball are um, yeah. definitely the strengths. I, th yeah. those, are, those are his two favorite, in fact, so I went to the Warrior Games as a photographer and going through some of my photos because Carrie and Christine reached back to me for some of my photos and they'll be like, hey, do you have certain photos of this? And I'm like, cool, I'll find them. And seated volleyball comes up and it's pictures of Josh, 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 Josh. I mean, and, and his arm is over the net in the guy's face. Like, I mean, the guy's tall, like he, he owns the net. It, it's amazing seeing him out there. <laughs> yeah. Even, Josh, even when if Josh, you, Josh, if you're, oh, sorry, Chief, go ahead. No, go ahead, Liz. I, I just was thinking that we have Josh back. So, Josh, if you could hear us, um, can you give us a wave or let us know? No? Okay. Well, Christine, we're going to turn back to you. So could you tell us about the other resources AFA has for Airmen and Guardians? And then how can Airmen and Guardians join your organization or get involved? Absolutely. So it's already been said, but we are a huge AFA family. Um, and that's centrally what we come back to each time with our mission of family and support and just our outreach to our community overall is, um, again, just inspirational to be a part of. Um, so ways that our airmen and guardians can actually get involved um, with us is really through our grassroots chapters. We have about 200 AFA chapters around the country and they're all so plugged into their communities, um, continuously offering support to our airmen and guardians any way that they can, whether that is through assistance grants um, that our local chapters even give to uh, airmen and guardians in their areas that need the support um, or other membership drives and marketing efforts and all sorts of great programming that our uh, AFA chapters continue to do each day uh, in their local communities. Um, and then of course we have our website, uh, afa.org backslash join um, where all airmen and guardians can um, definitely uh, join the fight and get involved um, and just become a part of this really big family that we have here. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that. And then Carrie, um, AFA is part of the Exchanges Retiree Advisory Council. So what's your role on the council and how, how does that strengthen the exchange benefit for airmen and guardians? Oh yeah, we, 
you know, with everything. We just love working in partnerships like this. Um, our president right now, we're very blessed to have Orville Wright serving as our president, and he always reminds us that you just can't have enough good friends in the fight. And that's what I think this council is really all about. Um, you know, sometimes you just watch the news and there's so much going on that can be negative. But then you step back and you just think, look at all the organizations, look at what you guys are doing, look at what our other like-minded nonprofits that we partner with are doing just to fight the good fight and to take care of our airmen, our guardians, um, all of our service members and their families and just make this world a better place. That's what I think the council does. Um, we're stronger together. Um, what you guys do to give everyone a voice, what our other organizations do, we will always be stronger together. And um, we're just so proud to be a part of the council and be partnering with you and just to be here speaking with y'all today. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, like, I, I kind of want to harp back on what you said it, it, about all the negativity kind of gets all the limelight, but man, there's so many just uh, positive and just great people in the world and just great organizations that are doing great things for for, for all humans across the world. So um, I, I just really want to start a campaign of just drowning out all the negativity in the world because, uh, you know, it seems like they, they get, it, it you know, that gets the clicks and that gets all the attention, but man, it's just uh, doing this podcast and just being around, uh, being able to kind of go to uh, different bases, you just see all the amazing stuff people are doing for other people. And so uh, I thank you for kind of harping on that as well. Well, I'm with you. Let's start that campaign right now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's enough. But but I, I'll let you say that you found it. You found that program. Whatever this campaign we started, you, you got it. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag drown out the negativity. There you go. <laughs> Okay, guys, thanks so much for um, sharing everything. Just want to turn to our live Facebook feed and share some of the viewer comments with you. Um, we have Michelle who says, hello, um, Terry, I believe it's Terry Hill. Hi from Germany, uh, Rochelle says, hi, Christine. So glad you are a part of this program. Um, and Michelle says, you all are amazing. Thank you. Uh, Chris Ward says, Dave, thank you for your service and all you do to help our heroes. Um, Michelle says, that is awesome. And then Joseph says, we are AFA hashtag stronger together. And I, I want to put in a plug. Oh, we have one more. Oh, yeah, I want to put in a plug for Josh. Josh looks like he beat me in any sport that, that known a man right now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 Josh, I'm, I apologize that we were having some audio and difficulty issues with you, uh, but uh, can, can you hear us? I think you get, get some feedback. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I can yeah. hear you. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> It's so very Josh slow. can hear us, but we're having a hard time hearing him. We'll have to invite him back on the show and have him um, oh, come yeah. and tell us about the the good work that he's doing and about his um, awesome volleyball and basketball skills. Oh yeah, absolutely. yes, we do have one more um, one more comment that I wanted to read. Marisa Connor says, "So many people out there who are dedicating their lives to helping others." So. Um, just wanted you guys to know that um, what you're sharing is is resonating and making a difference. So thank you for all that you're doing. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. So, Terry, before we say goodbye, can you please remind our viewers where they can go to find out more information about AFA? Absolutely. You can definitely check out our website at afa.org, um, all of our social media platforms at Air Force Associ. Um, But most importantly, Chief, I know you're going to be there, but we would love to see you at our Airspace and Cyber Conference. We'll be in National Harbor September 20th through 22nd. Uh, you can join, join virtually, but we are excited to be back in person and we would love to have you join us. And I definitely will be there. Uh, I get a chance to, well, I get the opportunity to uh, show some love on behalf of the exchange of the 12 Outstanding Airmen of the Year because uh, you guys invite them to, to it every year. And so I'm looking forward to, to, to being a part of that awesome uh, conference and also 
seeing, you know, it's a family reunion there too as well. So, I, you know, I, I get a chance to see all, a lot of folks that I used to be stationed with. So I, I get pretty excited to be, uh, and it's in a, in a nice location. National Harbor, not too bad. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I won't complain about that as well. So, uh, yeah, def definitely looking forward to, to seeing you guys at this at the conference. Can't wait. Chris Sorry. Christina, is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know about AFA and the good work that your team is doing? I just echo what we've been saying. Join the fight. Join the family. Um, we are just a bunch of people that want to give back and want to serve and want to support our airmen and guardians as best we can. And um, again, I'm privileged to be a part of that great mission. And I know Carrie would say the same. I know Josh would say the same. I know Dave would say the same. <laughs> and then Dave, where can our viewers go for more information on Mission Warriors and Healing Arts? Uh, right now we have our website, missionwarriors.org. Um, we also are on Facebook and Instagram under Mission Warriors. Um, and then honestly, you can, I'm, I'm not against any organization. Just Google Healing Arts and look up stuff. There is so much information out there about it. I encourage I encourage anybody and everybody uh, to look into it. it. It You will be better for it in the end. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so Kerry, uh, Kristen, Dave, and Josh, and, you know, like I said, Thank you guys so much for what you're doing for, for our airmen, our guardians, our warfighters, because you, you guys are taking stuff on the hill and, and really just, you know, you're advocating for everybody, everybody that's wearing the uniform. So I uh, can't thank you enough, can't appreciate you enough. Uh, Dave and Josh, thank you for your service, man. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're praying for you at, that you, you continue to heal because I know you just, you never like fully heal. But uh, uh, prayers for you and your family that y'all continue to heal through to uh, all the, the invisible wounds or, or visible wounds that you guys have endured uh, with your service. Uh, this just, you know, this podcast just means so much. Well, this, you guys being on the podcast means so much to our nation's heroes. Uh, thank you for uh, providing this information. Uh, Carrie and uh, Kristen, the organization is, is awesome. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a lifetime member myself. So uh, just, you know, I, I just appreciate all you've done uh, for my career and for folks like me. So. Uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, if you guys don't mind hanging on for a second after the live interview, uh, just to you know have some closing comments. But uh, we wish you all the best and thank you so much. Thank you, Chief. For Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> all right, now, Chief, chat out. Bye. Take care.